Taylor Swift thinks that you are an ignorant redneck who lives in a trailer park and doesn't have a spell. AOC says that we have concentration slash death camps in America, and she's actually kind of right. Plus, in today's podcast, we do a special story time of my two daddies. My name is Lisa Steele. This is Deconstructing the Culture. Alrighty then, guys. Before we go ahead and jump into today's podcast content, I actually really just want to pause and do a little reality check. Now, some of us, including myself, sometimes get a little too lost in the social media world, and I just want us to remember that social media is a fantasy. In a world where teenage suicide and depression and anxiety is on a rise, and that highly correlates with our media consumption, kind of makes you wonder, I would just say, regardless of your age, whether you are a teenager or you have grandkids who are teenagers, remember that technology, while it is a blessing and it allows you to reach out to the whole world around you and listen to my podcast, it also has a downside. I also want to give us a reality check. It is 100% a fantasy. Do not forget that. In a tech world where having lots of followers makes you valuable in the world's eyes, I want us to remind ourselves that's not what makes a person valuable. That is not what makes a person important. My opinion, quite frankly, is no more important than your opinion, is no more important than Rush Limbaugh's opinion, is no more important than anyone else's opinion. We're just opinionated people. And I want to remind you that social media is a fantasy world. What you see on there is highly tweaked, if not completely fake. And I need you to just remind yourself of that. And then maybe check out of social media and check out of the internet, spend some time in nature and with a book. And the reason why I bring this up is more and more in my personal life, I'm seeing young people teenagers and preteens affected by the world of social media, how that affects their self-esteem and affects their quality of life. And then from there, affecting the entire family's quality of life. Because if we know those of us who are, you know, family minded, that if one person is struggling in a family, that affects the whole family. So I really, really, really want us to just be mindful of that. And I also want us to remind ourselves that each moment makes up our life. So what we do every day and in the small moments in every day makes up our whole life. So if your every day and your small moments are filled with, oh, I'm waiting at the grocery store, check my phone. Oh, I'm waiting at the doctor's office, check my phone. Oh, I'm waiting in the elevator, check my phone. Your little moments are going to be filled up of checking your phone. And is that really what you want to look back on your life and see that your life was little moments of a big life scheme of checking your phone? My guess is your answer is the same as mine. And the answer is no, that's not what we want our life to be consumed with. I also want to remind you that everyone's social media page is essentially their alter ego. It is the best version of themselves. It is how they want to see themselves. It's how they want the world to see themselves. It is their highlights of their best moments, their most exciting moments, their most successful and happy moments, and even sometimes fake moments. A picture of a bunch of friends that maybe it looks like they're having such a great time, they have so many great friends, but in reality, they just met those people or they're complete strangers they don't get along with most of them. So it really is a place for the world to have their own personal page to build their alter ego and show the world exactly what they want the world to see. And maybe that's a very dramatic person or a very fun person or very interesting or maybe someone who reads a lot but really in in real life they don't read a whole lot. And honestly, this applies to me too, okay? This is not just something I'm saying the whole world is like this, but I'm not. My social media page is just the same as your social media page. It's the best of me. It's the best of my life. If you took, if you just took a a easy glance at my life, you'd think, holy cow, the only thing that this girl does is read books, talk about politics and go to Disney. (laughs) But those are just some, some highlights from my life. Oh, and travel some, but those are highlights. Highlights don't make up all of life. Can you imagine if people showed their entire life on social media for every amazing shining moment, there'd be 10 sad, 
not so great moments, maybe failures or deep hurt and pain. So just, I just, at the end of the day, I want you to, to take away two things from the short rant of mine is social media is fake. It is a fantasy world. It is people's best version of themselves. And every moment will make up a conglomerative uh, put together piece of your life. And that was, that was messy. Essentially every moment makes up your whole life. So if every moment you're checking your phone, that's what your life will be. And I just, I don't know, just want to leave that right there for you. Just a quick reminder in, in the digital age, I want us to just sometimes pause, hit refresh, and maybe put that phone down or re-engage with a stranger, re-engage with a loved one. But for anything, just connect to the real world because the online world is a fantasy world. All right. Now, with that, speaking of social media, AOC over the last few days did an Instagram live and she compared border control agents and ICE to concentration camps and she used the words never again, which is clearly in today's world when we think about concentration camps or using the word never again, especially in conjunction to that is clearly the Holocaust. That is what we all think of and that's what we know those words connected to and that's really gross I just want to say the people in the real concentration camps during the holocaust had no choice they did not want to be there didn't they did not travel to be there and travel towards the concentration camps they were trying to get away from that whereas the illegal immigrants coming from the over the border in Mexico, they're trying to get into our country. We're not forcing them to come and be in jail or be held in holding cells while we figure out their legal issues. We're not forcing anyone to be there. We just want them to stay in their own country or come over legally. So it's just all around, it's disgusting. Honestly, that's just one small point out of many. This is our, our ICE and our communities who have to deal with the influx of illegal immigrants, they're the ones getting the short end of the stick, having to deal with all this mess, and people could just stay in their own country. No one's forcing them to come here. And so, anyways, it's just disgusting, but the one thing that she does have right when she, um, when she made that remark, which her intent was entirely wrong, I just want to make that very clear, the one part that she did have right, though, is that we do have death camps here in America, but they are commonly known as Planned Parenthood. That's what they call themselves, or an abortion clinic. And that is the true atrocity. If we want to get super upset over an issue in today's world, it's not ICE and border control. And sure, there, it's a messy situation with ICE and border control and doesn't need to be reevaluated and fixed. Yes, it does. And I agree with that, but it is nowhere near ever being what a concentration camp was during the Holocaust time. Now, what is near that and what is committing a mass, a, a complete mass murder of human beings is Planned Parenthood and abortion clinics. And that is disgusting. So just pointing out that hypocrisy there and reminding us that we can get upset over all kinds of things. There are all kinds of things I get upset about, especially in our political world. But at the end of the day, we have to decide where we're going to put our energy, where we're going to target our emotional, physical, financial resources, and fight true atrocity. And that's abortion. Above and beyond any other issue, it's abortion. All right. So let's go ahead and also talk about Teen Vogue. Now, Teen Vogue is disgusting. And if you've not read Teen Vogue, I would highly recommend you go to a local store that sells it and read it just so you can educate yourself on why you should never read Teen Vogue and especially never let your teenagers actually read Teen Vogue. Recently, they came out with an article called, I kid you not, how to get an abortion if you're a teen. And it's, it's quite long, but the question is, I'm 16, I'm pregnant, and I don't want to be. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to get an abortion without my parents' permission, but I'm really scared to tell them because they are both against abortion. What should I do? The answer is truly sickening. Answer, one Saturday night when I was 15 years old, my boyfriend came back from the bathroom post-sex and informed me that the condom had ripped. Plan B was only available with a prescription back then, so I spent the whole next day calling clinics, most of which were closed on Sundays. 
pause right there. So in a teenage magazine that teenagers read, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, reading this magazine and this girl in particular she's writing back to is 16 years old and she's already normalizing and saying, hey, this is totally fine. When I was 15, I was hanging out and hooking up with my boyfriend. So there we go, warning signs, but continuing. She continues with saying, first of all, I'm here to tell you that you have nothing to be ashamed of. Of course, nothing, absolutely nothing. You're 16 year olds, years old and sleeping with a boy and you have nothing to be ashamed of. Of course not, because, you know, value, virtues, being chased, none of that matters. You have nothing to be ashamed of. She continues, accidents can happen even to the most careful among us. Mm hmm. And it's only logical that if teens are mature enough to become parents, they're mature enough to decide whether or not they want to give birth. Wrong. So wrong. That's so wrong. It's like saying if a child is old enough to recognize the difference between having a penis or a vagina, they're old enough to decide what gender they are. Uh uh. No. Just because you can you can recognize something or you can have sex doesn't mean you should be having sex. It's also the equivalent of saying like, you know, teenagers, if they're old enough to be able to procreate and have babies at the age of 12, because many girls start menstruating at age 12, they're old enough to make all decisions. They can decide what they're going to eat and how they're going to dress and uh, what they're going to do for their education. They can decide if they're going to get married all because they can reproduce. No, just because you are 12 or 13 or 14 or 15 and you can reproduce doesn't mean you get to decide, oh, I'm going to reproduce and decide whether or not I'm going to reproduce. Because guess what? Guess who has to pick up the consequences of your choices at that age? The parents, legal guardians. And if the parents and legal guardians are the ones who have to take responsibility for that person's actions and they are very, very much responsible for, them, responsible for them, not to mention dependent on them, then they get a say in that. Continuing, she continues by saying, having access to abortion should be your right, regardless of your parents' belief. Let's reword that, reword that. Having access to killing your child should be your right, regardless of your belief. <laughs> okay, so it's like, I, I mean, it's, it's a moral fact that killing is wrong. And I cannot go to someone and say, it's my right to have access to whatever I want in the grocery store without paying, regardless of the grocers, the owner's thoughts, because it's my right. Um, says who? It's not a moral right to be able to take the life of another human being. That's sick and wrong. And to say it like that to a 16 year old in a teenager, magazine is truly disgusting. She continues, so let's talk logistics. Your first step is knowing your state's rules when it comes to parental consent, though there are ways to sidestep those rules depending on what state you're in. More on that later. She continues on giving a long diatribe about how lots of people, even if they say they're against abortion, that they will get abortions for themselves or for their children regardless. So she encourages the girl to tell her parents and hope that they're going to help her get an abortion. Um, and then after a while, she goes on to tell her about this legal option and says, basically, she, she tells her, like, in this state and whatever, whatever, you don't have to get a parent's consent or you don't have to notify them. But she's just like, if you live in a state where you absolutely have to, she, she says, there is a legal option in 36 states that would let you get an abortion without parental con approval called a judicial bypass procedure, which is a real thing. She is true in her facts here, which I'm not a fan of, but um, it's, an, it's a holdup which nobody should have to resort, resort, which is, I mean, I don't think that you should kill your children at all, and whatever stands in the way of that should stand there. I mean, whatever, have as many roadblocks as we can to put in the way of human beings be able, being able to easily take the life of unborn children, I'm all for it. Anyways, the process for a judicial bypass is different in every state, but in each case, there's an option which involves a minor testifying before a judge and receiving a court approval to access abortion care without telling her parents. And unfortunately, and, and this is the, the truth is, with 
I think this is how in some cases late term abortions can happen is a girl if she decides to do the judicial bypass that can take some time which means the pregnancy is going to get further and further along which is 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 really tragic when she does inevitably get that abortion because by that time no one can deny that that's a child it has its own dna it has a beating heart it has its own fingerprints it can in many cases survive outside the womb and she ends this article this disgusting vogue writer ends the article with everybody loves someone who's had an abortion including you that's the only part she's got right is there are a lot of women who have had abortions and so chances are you do know somebody and love somebody who's had an abortion. And that is where compassion and love comes to reaching out to people who have had abortions. But just because we love someone who's had an abortion, it doesn't mean we accept that abortion is okay or moral or should be someone's, quote, right. <sighs> truly, truly so sad that this is what is being printed in Teen Vogue. And young, impressionable minds are reading this. And I just, I pity not only the girl, because this is not loving to the girl. This is not loving to the, this teenage girl who has no idea what she's doing. All she knows is she believes the lies being told in this. And she will have a lot of heartache. And I, I, I grieve for the girls. I grieve for their babies. I grieve for the grandparents who will never know that they were grandparents or might never know. Maybe they will later and they will have to grieve that. But it's just truly, truly sad. All right, now before I continue on, I'm just going to ask that you please, if you haven't already, leave a review for my podcast Give it a five-star review, leave some nice words, and share with a friend. Share on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you're at. That would be just so, so appreciated in a world where Steven Crowder gets demonetized and live action gets kicked off of Pinterest. It is incredibly difficult to grow this kind of platform. It is incredibly difficult to be able to sustain it. So I'm not asking for your money, at least not yet, but for right now, I would please ask that you subscribe, leave a review on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on um, Apple, iTunes, on the 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 book of the face no the um youtube just please uh, whatever you can do to help support this it would be lovely so thank you so much moving on let's talk about story time this week's book is a little different than i usually do it's called my family my two dads maybe if we have enough time or maybe next week we'll go over my two moms i found these at my local library and <sighs> it's truly, I just have to tell you right off the bat, this is a poorly written children's book. There's nothing entertaining or clever about it. It's just social justice warrior telling people that everyone should be able to have two moms or two dads. <laughs> Anyways, the one thing I did learn is I always wondered if there's two men and they're both dad isn't a confusing calling for dad and you don't know which dad is dad number one and dad number two like how do you distinguish so basically it starts out with a boy he is the reporter student of the week right and then he's going home his name's lenny he's going home with jasmine but you can call me jazz and they get on this they're said are we gonna get on the school bus and he says no then a horse trailer pulls up and Jazz's dad is driving. Let's see what that Jazz's dad is driving. He's driving. Jazz's dad laughed. Nice to meet you. I'm Jazz's dad. Well, the short one, he winked at Jazz. So he's the short dad. Maybe that's how they distinguish. And it continues and they see Jazz's house and then they see Jazz's barn. And then he asks, Lenny asks, who helps with your school projects? As they hopped out of the truck, Poppy checks my design. So it's Poppy and Dad. That's how they distinguish. It's Poppy and Dad. You want to see what Poppy looks like? This is Poppy. It's a really lame children's book, but it continues. Speaking of projects at Poppy, why don't you pick some apples for your solar system? And then they continue on and they social justice more year. And basically she goes back and forth and literally the boy just asks Jazz, the girl, over and over, who makes your dinner? Oh, Poppy does if he's home. Otherwise, we might have to eat oats. 
or else, or else, does your dad always braid your air, hair, asked Lenny. So it's like just the entire book is him just asking, who does this? Who does this? Who does this? That's a really lame student report. Can you imagine if you just went to a straight home and you were just like, who combs your hair? Who makes your dinner? It's like, this is, this is your children's book. This is your idea of, of a children's book. And the last question is, who taught you to dance? Asked Lenny. Dad and Poppy both did. <sighs> this is what we call children's literature today. You know, not teaching morals or not teaching even just I love my mommy so much. Like, no, we have to, we have to ask children lame, lame questions about who makes what and what so we can distinguish between dad and dad. Yeah. Anyways, I don't like that book in case you didn't catch on to that. Now, really quickly in what time we have left, we're going to go over Taylor Swift's new song, You Need to Calm Down. Taylor Swift in her current song that she just came out with this last week, truly trampled on flyover nation America. Like she, she literally was screaming. I know I was from Tennessee once. I'm pretty sure she was from Tennessee. And I know I was once a country girl, but I want to make absolutely sure that everybody knows I'm no longer part of that. I'm definitely not part of country or flyover nation. I want everyone to know, please, 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 please accept me into the, into the Hollywood elites that we just love their or gay people, we have to virtue signal all the time. She's just begging so hardcore. She went for years without saying anything about politics to making an endorsement against Marsha Blackburn in Tennessee, which failed miserably and nobody cared. Shocker. And now she's coming out with this song, which is so blatantly, blatantly rude to anybody except the people who are in her elite status club. There are a ton of celebrities in this. I mean, everyone from Ellen DeGeneres to lots of people from TV shows I don't watch to, it was just lots of faces, Katy Perry. Anyways, so here are some of the lyrics. I actually can't play the music because last time I tried to do that, I got slapped hardcore from YouTube. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just redo the lyrics. The lyrics go, you are somebody that I don't know, but you're taking shots at me like it's Patreon. And I'm just like, bleep, it's 7 a.m. Say it in the street, that's a knockout, but you say it in a tweet, that's a cop-out. Okay, so she's talking about Twitter people going after her. We got it. And I'm just like, hey, are you okay? I don't think she actually means it when she asks that, but you know. And I ain't trying to mess with your self-expression, except you are. And I've learned a lesson that stressing and obsessing about somebody else, else is no fun and snakes and stones never broke my bones. So, oh, 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 you need to calm down. You're being too loud. <laughs> She's talking to everybody who apparently doesn't agree with her. We need to calm down, which is very, very rude. And we're being too loud. So she says she's not messing with her self-expression if we don't agree with her, but calm down. We're being too loud. And it, the video is disgusting. It's literally just every drag queen, gay, whatever you could throw in there, she did it. And it's this picture pink, bright neon colors in this trailer park. And it's really not tasteful. But she continues, you just need to stop. Like, can you just not step on my gown? You need to calm down. You are somebody that we don't know, we as in Hollywood elites, I'm assuming, but you're coming at my friends like a missile. Why are you mad when you could be glad? Glad is spelled G-L-A-A-D, which is for the gay, lesbian, and something, something. It's, it's a homosexual thing. I should look that up, but yeah, I can't remember exactly what each one of the letters stand for. Sunshine on the street, at the parade, but you would rather be in the dark age. So apparently anybody who doesn't agree with Taylor Swift, we're in the dark age, don't you know? If you believe in traditional marriage or baby shouldn't be slaughtered in the womb, dark age, okay. Just making the sign must have taken all night. <laughs> um, so just making that sign must have taken all night. Apparently we take all night to make a sign. And in the video she has the signs misspelled. She has these protesters, which are really rude. It was like redneck, hillbilly, missing teeth, wearing bedraggled clothes, very grungy and dirty, 
group of people holding misspelled signs. And she says, you just need to take several seats and then try to restore the, the peace and control your urge to scream about all the people you hate. Newsflash, Taylor, nobody hates gays. At least very few people do. I personally don't advocate for any special rights or privileges for people who identify as, as having same-sex attraction. I have loved ones, friends, and family whom I love with all my heart as human beings. I love them. And them being gay doesn't make me love them any less. I don't agree with their lifestyle, but heck, I have straight friends who are shacking up together and I don't agree with their lifestyle to live together before they're married. It doesn't mean I don't love them. So this whole, oh, control your urge to scream at all the people you hate. Who are you talking about? This group of people don't actually really exist. And if they do, they're so small and so fringe, they don't really matter. And, and you're just blanket statement calling everybody yeah, you're giving everyone a very, very negative perception. Um, let's see. Cause shade never made never made anybody less gay. Okay. And you just need to calm down. You're being too loud. And I'm just like, oh, 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 you just need to stop. Can you just not step on my gown? You need to calm down. And we see you over there on the internet comparing all the girls who are killing it, but we figured you out. We know now we all got crowns. We need to calm down. Oh, 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 you need to calm down. You're being too loud. And I'm just like, oh, 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 you just need to stop. Like, can you just not step on our counts? You need to calm down. <sighs> I should have started with this, but I'm actually not a Taylor Swift hater. I actually really liked her music, like, as a tween, teen, young adult. I, I've really liked most of her music. Um, so I'm not saying this as a Taylor Swift hater. Like, there are some people I'm just like, ugh, like Ariana Grande, I can't stand her music. But Taylor Swift, I really like her music, so this is, like, disappointing. It's like, Taylor, please, you make some decent music that's, like, popish and hippie, whatever. Just stick to the music. Nobody needs to hear your social justice warrioring. I don't, anyways, I digress. So in a re review from The Federalist, cultural editor Emily Jenksky provides a scathing rundown of the video's breathtakingly elitist aesthetic. Quote, to illustrate her LGBT pride anthem, Swift assembled the glitterati, casting them as the heroes of utopian trailer park, where her feud with Carrie Patey, Carrie, Katy Perry ends, and the ugly gay marriage protesters meet their match in a fabulous showdown of celebrity force. This set, of course, almost certainly costs more, more than what many people who make such places their home earn in a year. Quote, love letters only, read the side of one little... Lily White mailbox in Swift World, where did the bills go? Her creativity mysteriously lapsed when it came to the cast protesters who looked like they should be playing banjos in Deliverance, toothless, badly dressed, holding misspelled signs. Control your urges to scream about the people you hate, Swift demands, cause shade never, ba never made anybody less gay. It's all grotesquely elite when you consider that she's mocking people with less money while appropriating a trailer park lifestyle for three minutes of breezy, colorful fun. Are there a lot of people who yell at Swift on the internet? Some, sure, but she went with a very specific type. The message is basically, we're beautiful and right, you're poor and dumb. And if that sounds reductive or based on characters that would never be tolerated if used against the left's petty ideology, identity groups, watch the video again. Emily is absolutely spot on and truly, truly just very distasteful. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and end with good in the world. Now, I love this story. You guys know me, I have a huge soft spot for our men in blue, our police officers, and our men in yellow, our firefighters, our men who serve in the military. I just think they're amazing and they should be praised when they do praiseworthy things. Um, so one thing that happened is, this is from The Blaze TV, a citizen flagged down Officer James Riley of Austin, Texas, police department last week and said there was a young boy who was walking by himself in a parking lot. Riley located the boy and the department said on its Facebook page that he began learning about the heartbreaking situation. Turns out the boy walked to a corner store alone to get snacks for a younger sibling. Police said Riley was concerned for the boy's safety so he gave him a ride home. Well, after he got home, Riley went inside the boy's residence and the officer discovered that the family was going through very hard financial times. Police on Tuesday told Blaze that the children of the residents were alone at the time and that the officer contacted a parent. But Riley made sure he talked to the kids about safety and they should never leave their home without an adult alone. 
Then Riley went the extra mile, and this is where it gets really sweet. Police said that he went to an HEB supermarket and purchased a shopping cart full of groceries and snacks the young boy and his siblings could prepare without needing to turn on a stove. So heartwarming. I literally love this story. Riley also brought items that a parent could cook, the Post said. The department said Riley showed true heart with his act of kindness and is just one example of how our officers work to make Austin a safe community. This is beautiful. And this is what, in large part, I think our men and women who serve in the armed forces do. They care about their communities. They live there too. Most of the time, they live there too. They just want a safer, more secure, good place for children to be. And they have big hearts just like anybody else. And so I just want to point this out is it's just the kindness that does exist in our world. People do care. We don't need big government or corrupt organizations to be in control of our money under force to try and take care of the world. I do think that citizens and communities can pull together and take care of the needies in our in our community. And I say this as someone who benefited from that. That's another story for another time. But I will say my mother, as a single mother, right after she escaped polygamy, was utterly destitute, had no job, no car, no place to live. She had two babies and a couple of duffel bags. And like I said, another story for another time, but it was a community that helped her through those hard times. And I hope someday to be able to give back and be as generous as the people who helped my mom and me when I was young. So God bless you. God bless America.